With that said, I'd like to say welcome again to the topic today, which is why you matters. Now, I, I do believe you all out there matter, but my title is a little different for today. It's why you matters, plural. And what is that? Well, I created a topic and it's really a play of words on sort of the, what we may know as donor-centric or you-centric communications. Such an important concept and yet one that unfortunately is not used enough, which is why I was inspired to create this, this presentation today. So what exactly do I mean by you-centric communications? Well, I'm gonna unpack it in two ways, right? First, I wanna talk about a little philosophical short story uh, to kind of underscore why eucentricity is so important. And then I'm going to move into a more pragmatic, practical tool that I'll share with you. Uh, we'll do some live editing of some communications. Uh, but with this tool, my hope is that once you hit end on this webinar at the end and you sit at your desk, if you're not sitting there already, go back to your desk, you have this tool to immediately begin to cut and paste your own copy. And by copying communications, I mean anything from thank you letters to appeal letters to newsletters, to website copies, social media copy, any kind of copy you have. And quite honestly, I hope that the tool I'm gonna to present, once you learn this style, that it becomes so natural that you're even speaking to people in a more you-centric style. So what do I mean by all of this? All right, well, let's start with the, with the philosophical. I promise the philosophical, then we'll move into the pragmatic. So here's the philosophical story. Two and a half years ago, I interviewed for the position I'm in now. And when I saw the opportunity, it listed the job as major gift officer for independence mission schools. And I knew immediately what that was. Uh, but if you've worked in a university, hospital, or are familiar, and even some smaller mid-sized nonprofits have major gift officers. Um, and essentially they're individuals that are focused on a list of donors or prospects at a certain higher dollar amount and above. Um, and so, I thought, interesting, major gift officer. So I applied and throughout the journey of the interview process, I learned that if hired, I would be the very first major gift officer in the network's history. Now, today the network is 10 years old, so it's still a young organization. And I thought through that. And then uh, as I was interviewing my future boss, now my current boss, Michelle, uh, offered me the opportunity. And she said, you know, before we close the deal, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts, comments, questions about the job. And I said, the only thing that I had really wanted to comment on was the title, because we agreed that on day one, my job would be to receive a list of donors and prospects, say 100 to 200 donors and prospects. And my second job would be then to pick up the phone or write an email, write a little note and introduce myself, because many of these folks have never heard of anyone personally from our organization, let alone a major gift officer. And I said, a conversation will go something like this, you know, from ringing on the phone and go, hi, Sally, George, Whoever you are, my name is Tony Luna, and I am the major gift officer for Independence Mission Schools. Major gift officer. Hear how that sounds? Now, if you are thinking, gee, that sounded awkward, that the first thing the person's going to think when they hear major gift officer is, oh gosh, this guy not only is about money, but he's about big money. He wants a big check for me. He wants to know if I'm going to make a big gift for my donor advised fund. He wants a gift from my family foundation, yada, yada, yada. So not only are they thinking I'm about money, but now I'm about big money. I expressed to Michelle, I said, I'm concerned that the conversation will end before it even begins if I'm leading with major gift officers, my title and why. Because major gift officer puts the emphasis on not only the gift, but the major gift. Um, as opposed to the individual who is making the impact. Sure, they're making a gift, but what are they making the gift for? And the impact that they're making, whether it's on our students, if they're donating to save the environment, the planet, if they're helping an animal shelter, if they're helping uh, seniors who need extra help, whatever the cause is, we really should be focusing less on the transactional, the gift, and more on the powerful impact that individual is having. And so Michelle and I talked about it. We kicked back a few titles. She agreed. In fact, she had been reading up on this herself. And so we agreed and eventually came up with director of donor impact. And we both went, yeah, that's where the emphasis should be on the impact the donor is making and not on the gift, let alone the major gift. If that opportunity comes through the moves management and building that relationship, then sure, we'll focus on the major gift. But in the beginning, it really should be focused on my reaching out 
thanking the individual, hearing their story, and sharing perhaps one or two ways that their uh, what they've done, their investment has made an impact on the lives of our students in the classrooms and their families outside. So with that said, I'd like to give you a little bit of homework. If you are in your organization right now, and if your title is more organizational or uh, transactional, money focused, if your department, can we talk about like institutional advancement office, right? What does that say? It says, we're all about advancing our institution. All right, this is not to throw judgment or shade at any institutional advancement offices, but I think if we're being intellectually honest with ourselves, we would agree that that emphasis is all about us, I, me, mine, our institution, and less about the individual um, that is making that impact, that's making that investment and inspired to make a difference in let's say our patients or our university students, or in my case, our pre-K through eight students. So the homework I'd like to give you is to consider your own title, your own department name. If it is more organizational centric or self-centric, if you will, consider you know, ideas about how to make it a little more you-centric or donor-centric. And look, if you're in a position where you can't change things, it is what it is, then perhaps you can tuck this in the back of your mind and one day when you're interviewing like I was, perhaps you can float this idea up there about how our field should be really more focused on the individual and their impact rather than on the gift or the institution. We really should be focused more on the donor and see if they're open to it. And perhaps you then can create your own title like director of donor impact or some variation thereof. Everybody with me on that? I hope so. All right, great. So that was the philosophical story and the sort of emphasis on flipping the script from work centric to you centric. So let's move on to the pragmatic, I promised you a pragmatic part of this presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my PowerPoint right now. Let's see if I can share the screen and bring in PowerPoint. We'll start from the beginning because that's what we do. And right here, Why You Matter is title of the presentation. And that is not me in the middle. That would be the individual that's making the impact, the donor, the volunteer, whomever they are. The volunteers, of course, are donors with their time. So the arrows are meant to emphasize that we should be focusing on the individual out there um, and that everything else that they do, the impact they have is ripple effects that go out to your mission, right? So putting the donor in the center. So let's go into a definition of what we mean. Really, you centric communications or why you matters is putting the reader of whatever it is or the person you're speaking with at the center of the action instead of our organization it is indeed communicating the impact the reader is having rather than our organization. And again, you know, it can go beyond a reader to a person you're even speaking to personally on the phone, on a Zoom call, or in person at an event or a meeting, right? So again, putting the reader in the center and communicating the impact that that individual is having rather than the impact your organization is having. So what does this look like practically speaking on paper? Let's take it from a purely thank you letter perspective. Let's get into this now. I've created just a little draft mock-up of a letter. I wanna break from the presentation for a minute just so that we can do some workshopping. So this is typical of a letter that we've all written before. I'm sure a version of it, a thank you letter. So we have Dear Sally, on behalf of the Barky Barky Meow Meow, whoops, spell check, Meow Meow Animal Shelter, I wanna thank you for your generous gift of in your mouth. Because of your gift, we will be able to save countless the lives of countless cats and dogs. So at first glance, I'm assuming this looks pretty, pretty normal to you. Typical thank you letter. Open up with on behalf of. So here's what I like to do. I like to point out that on behalf of Barky Barky Meow Meow Animal Shelter, who's that focused on? Is that focused on the impact the donor's having? No, it's focused on the name of our organization. And by the way, try writing a letter without putting the name of your organization in the copy of the letter. And why do I give you that challenge? And it may not be possible in some cases, but why do I give you that challenge? Here's why. Because when that person, the donor or prospect gets your letter, especially if it's an appeal letter or a thank you letter, they're gonna see your name emblazoned with your logo on the outside of the envelope. When they open it, it'll be at the top with the logo or on the side, somewhere on that letter, they're gonna see the logo second time. And of course, it'll be in the legalese at the bottom if they get to that PS about how much your gift is tax deductible, they're gonna see the name. So at least two, perhaps three times, they're already gonna see the name of your organization. So is it necessary to write it yet again and in the first sentence? I'd say no, and we'll see what we can do about that in a minute. So this is very work-centric. Next sentence, I, I, me, mine, I'm all about us. 
I want to thank you. So by the time we get to the first you, it's really a third priority. Because we have the organization, the I, and then thank you. And then what do we do? We reduce them to the gift once again. Now look, in, in a lot of thank you letters, you have to put the gift up front. Typically it happens. So I think this is okay here. But my point is to say, this could be done better. We could really be focusing a whole lot more on the donor instead of our organization. But here we go again now. Next sentence, because of your gift, once again, reducing them to a gift, we, because you know you don't matter, your gift does, but because of your gift, we will be able to state your mission, save the lives of countless cats and dogs. Again, are we doing that or is the donor doing it? It's really kind of a philosophical question and I hope that you would err on the side of saying, of course, we're missing the boat when we say your gift will allow us. Really, it's them that's doing it. So let's go quick edit this and uh, see if we can make this a little more youth centered. So dear Sally, I already said, let's get rid of the barky, barky, meow, meow, animal shelter, the name of your organization. You know, you're thanking someone, so why not just start with thank you and not I want to thank you. Don't state what you're going to state, just state it. So how about dear Sally? Thank you. Well, look at that. Not only is your letter shorter, but you're punchy. You're right to the point. Thank you. Really heartwarming, right? For your generous gift of blank. Let's leave that for now because we do have to state that typically. You can also move it somewhere else in the letter, but let's leave it for now. Here we go. Because of your gift. Now, you just talked about the gift here in the first sentence. Do you need to open up in the second sentence again with a repetitive thought because of your gift? We will be able to save countless cats and dogs. You don't have to. Watch this. How about this? get rid of gift because of you comma not we will but how about this here's a radical change countless cats and dogs lives will be saved how about that dear sally thank you for your generous gift of ten dollars let's say because of you countless cats and dogs will be saved is there any we in there Right? It's not because of your gift. We are so great. We're going to go save cats and dogs. No, because of you. Countless cats and dogs lives will be saved. Now, if you got a thank you letter like this, even if you weren't conscious of it, I would think subconsciously you'd feel pretty good. Maybe in a different way than if the organization talked about the great they're doing and only focused on you as a means to an end or a gift. All right, so that was quick and easy, and you might be saying, huh, I could certainly try that, but Tony, you probably had many years doing this, and you're an expert at it, okay. Um, and so it's not gonna be that easy because I'm stuck, uh, we write the way we write, and the way, the way we write is always how we've written, and it's not gonna be easy to edit our own work. I agree with you, it's not easy to edit your own work. I've tried, it's really tough. So what I'd like to introduce to you next is this slide. A company called Bloomerang, some of you may know them, as a constituent relationship management option out there. Bloomerang has uh, very nicely presented this free communications audit tool. It's really focused on you centricity. It's an audit tool. If you go to bloomerang.com forward slash comms dash audit dash tool, you'll find this particular tool. What it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you very practically to do two things. One, uh, I invite you to take any copy you have, say a thank you letter you just sent out, a newsletter copy, so maybe a story from your newsletter. It's going to allow you to cut and paste it, drop it into this box, which I'll show you in a minute, and it's going to give you uh, sort of your use centricity score. It's also going to give you a grade level test, tell you what grade, what academic grade you're writing at. And so let's, let's go right here. We'll explain a little bit more. We're going to stop sharing here on this PowerPoint, and we will then share screen again and we will bring up the donor centricity tool. Here we go. A donor centricity and readability tool for nonprofit written communications. Look how easy this is. Here you have an empty box. And what you're invited to do is again, cut and paste a letter that you've done um, or newsletter, story, uh, website copy, pop it right in here, click the analyze button. And over here, it's gonna change. It's gonna say, your letter has X number of you and X number of we, and the rule of thumb is that you wanna use twice as many you words as we words in your letter or your communications, right? Twice as many you as we. Most times we write, including when I started, before I found this tool, I realized I was using maybe twice as many we, sometimes two and a half to three times as many we as you. I had the script upside down, it was flipped in the opposite direction. Um, so let's 
We'll use this in just a minute, show you what that looks like. And then it's gonna give you the reading level. Ideally, if you're writing to an audience that's wide and varied and you don't know specifically who you're writing to, you wanna stick with a sixth to eighth grade reading level, right? And so this will not only give you the U score, but it'll also give you your grade level score. And ideally you wanna land between sixth and eighth grade, again, for a general audience, if you don't know who you're writing to. Of course, if you're writing to a PhD candidate class, you're gonna write a little differently, obviously, but if you're writing to a wide swath and it could be anybody out there, uh, then you stick to the sixth to eighth grade level. All right, so we're gonna break from this just for a second because I wanna pull up a letter. Now I thank my good friend, Joe Quozo from the Bucks County Opportunity Council for allowing me, here's my share screen, for allowing me to use his basic thank you letter that he had written and sent out not long ago. Here it is, hopefully you can see that on your screen. And so, you know, I'd like to thank you for your support of the Bucks County Opportunity Center. Blah, 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 blah. All right, I wanna do this. Let's do what I just said we can do and you can do this right after you end this video, pull up your copy, cut, or excuse me, copy your copy, huh, copy your copy. Let's go back to, uh, our audit comms tool, Let's share screen again, go right back here with our copy, pop it in there. There we are. Uh, you don't have to do the deer or the legalese at the bottom. We're mainly focused on the central copy, right? So there's Joe's original letter. Let's click the analyze button. Now watch this over here to your right when I click analyze. Boom. Okay. So here's what happens. Here's your character and your word count and sentence count. The U test, here's Joe's letter. Joe used the U words eight times and we words 11 times. So is the ratio accurate, is it correct? Well, ideally Joe would have used uh, U words, uh, twice as many U words as we words. So in this case, eight is not twice as many as 11, it's less than, so it really violates the whole U centricity rule. It's more organizational centric. All right, so how do we fix that? Well, let's go through and workshop a letter together. All right, so let's share the screen again, go back to Joe's letter. There we are. And thank you again, Joe. I know it was very kind of you to allow me to uh, eviscerate your letter and change it to a more eccentric style. So let's get into this. Dear so-and-so, I would like to thank you for the support, for your support of the Bucks County Opportunity Center. Okay, so, you know, again, let's take the name of the organization out uh, and let's just chop this all the way down. Dear Sally George, how about thank you? <laughs> you can start with that. Might seem a little goofy. Um, but let's see. Thank you for how about this? Reducing poverty. Thank you for reducing poverty. What a novel idea. That's exactly what they're doing. And partnering with our community to promote economic self-sufficiency. With uh, let's see. Now you have to mention the gift at least once, right? With your gift of blank dollars, right? Blank dollars, whoops, blank dollars. Ah, blank dollars. Um, instead of saying we were able to help, you can say with your gift of blank, over 57,000 residents. How about received, not whether they need received, food, shelter, and not or hope, and hope, of course they received hope, food and shelter, I would hope would give them hope. So there's the first sentence. Thank you for reducing poverty and partnering with our community to promote economic self-sufficiency. With your gift of blank, over 57,000 residents received. Here's exactly what you did. You've given food, you've given shelter, and you've given hope. You feeling that? I hope so. All right, next sentence. Our five programs truly make a difference in the Bucks, lives of Bucks County residents. How about, not our five programs, how about you, not the five programs, you truly make a difference in the lives of Bucks County residents. Whether it is a housing issue, a heating problem, a tax return, or basic needs like food, not the BCOC is here to provide, right? We're trying to go youth centric. So you, and you might want to put help provide. Help or helped, help provide. You helped provide those services to people who needed it the most. For over 55 years, BCOC has responded. How about changing it to individuals like you, or you and individuals like you if you want to, have responded to the needs of the community. And with your continued support, let's see, 
uh, BCOC will continue to be here to serve Bucks County families. How about saying with your continued support, Bucks County families will continue to be served. There you go. So with that said, let's take the copy now that we just rewrote, re-edited real quick. We edited, we edited real quick. We'll stop sharing here. We will go back to the tool. Uh, we'll bring that up. We will delete the old copy that was, remember, was 8 and 11. Watch that box now. Let's put in a new copy. Let's click Analyze. And survey says, boom, you used U words 12 times and we word once. Ideally, you should use twice as many U as we. All right, we've used 11 more times U than we. This may be a little exaggerated, but I think you get the point. Really, the focus just flipped completely from focusing on the great the organization is doing and the donor being a means to that great end to how great is that individual and look at the impact you're making. And that's how we should be writing folks. That's what I mean by why you matters because you really does matter. And it'd be great to hear if you thought it was helpful, but it would even be better if you could maybe send me say a paragraph of copy before and a paragraph of copy after it would really energize and inspire me to see that this presentation made a difference for you and your writing and your organization and hopefully increase inspiration and increase the financial investment of time, talent, or treasure that your donors, your volunteers make, your board members make um, in, to have that impact that they have every day on those that you serve. With that said, I thank you. And um, I really wish you transformational moments in your writing 